Hello, everyone. How are you doing? And welcome uh, to another fabulous day here on planet Earth. And uh, I am very much honored today to have a very special guest. We have been talking a little bit before we went live. Um, I, folks, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, I have the honor to introduce as uh, author, um, Ken Humphreys. How are you doing? Well, I'm fine today. Thank you. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. And I know you were telling me that the uh, the weather there is bloody awful. And I was telling you we're in the middle of a blizzard. So go figure. Yeah, it, it may have some connection with global warming. I mean, we've had like 40 days and nights of rain. I, that's, how, that's what we're having. <laughs> So. <laughs> so the frogs got the uh, the little boats going. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. We used to say that. Well, Ken, I want to welcome you to the channel. Uh, we've got uh, 100 people now in the uh, audience, and it's growing. Uh, a lot of people into the chat room. They're telling you hello. Uh, I just uh, want to reemphasize that as well. And folks, uh, I got just about five, six minutes before we went live and was talking with Ken. Folks, this is going to be fascinating. So Ken, as you and I were talking, I was impressed by the fact that you never approached the subject about religious beliefs from a religious point of view because you were never religious. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. In my circle, in my community, if you like, uh, we're Londoners, um, people don't take religion seriously. I don't, I don't know if you've personally been over to the UK, but um, it's largely a post-Christian society. And Interesting. although I come across Christians, uh, I don't come across Christians who really are into discussing their faith, because frankly, it's, it's based on very flimsy, you know, I hope it's true sort of, you know, a casual attitude, but then they get on with their life like everybody else. Um, no, you know, so it, it, why I enjoy talking to the States is because over there, you do have a few people who actually take those stories seriously. And that You've is got a president that takes the story seriously. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> I know his, his spiritual advisor. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're well, very deep here in it. Mr. Bush, uh, sorry, Mr. Mr. Trump has a, has a, a, an interesting profile in Britain and across the world. I mean, you know, oh, yes. it's, I don't know if we judge all Americans by Trump. Um, probably it would be unfair to do so. But yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, well, it's interesting. <laughs> That's it's all I can say. There's a very interesting, there's a very true uh, British saying, you know, and, and it basically translates as bullshit baffles brains. And I think that that is what's going on in this world, you know, that people can't see reality and so they see nonsense instead. Now, you approach this, I like this, um, I have deep respect when I heard your words. You approach the subject matter between, and you use, I love how you use the term, what is actual history and what we could say is a perceived real history that doesn't never existed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to illustrate that point. I mean, if you take a character like St. Paul, St. Paul looms hugely in the, in the new Testament. Um, you know, a, a, almost a third of the book is taken up with Paul and his comings and goings and his writings. Okay. But, if you look for Paul, St. Paul, in history, where is he? He doesn't <laughs> exist. There is no evidence for Paul anywhere. So we are entirely dependent on the, the New Testament source for this character. Now, why would that be so? How can this grandee of early Christianity be so invisible to the rest of, you know, history? You know, it, it doesn't make sense. I always found it puzzling. Um, Philo is one of my favorite philosophers, um, although it, his uh, Abrahamic point of view, but it never the case. He was a real person. 
And it's very odd on his sojourn to Jerusalem, uh, which is, was 36 AD, that he actually wrote about, he didn't hear about any of this. No movement of a Messiah, no raising of the dead. Um, no, I mean, and uh, I'm going, well, now, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, I, I, I contend as well, one of the things that it snapped in me one day, Wayne, do you think that there was no one who could draw or paint back in the first century? Hmm. I don't know. Were there no painters? I mean, wouldn't someone have, if, if we have Vespasian's bust, I'm, I'm sure someone could have drawn the Messiah or the Savior of mankind. Yeah, and, and it's true because, okay, maybe he was a simple fisherman, but given that this man supposedly performed miracles before crowds of, of the multitude, the thousands of them, one or two of them might have been literate. One or two of them may have been unable to record something, and maybe, like you say, sketch the man. I'm, I'm a, a, I would even follow that up. I said they don't even, in words, describe the man. You know, he has. Mm. It, it, there is no description. And Excellent is, point, Ken. Excellent point. But well, yet yeah, today, you have a billion plus people who worship an image that someone who. <laughs> Then never existed. Well, the enormity of the of what is true is 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 so far from their conception of the world. I mean, because of course they they come from a faith base. Yeah, uh, it's from a base of faith, and it, it's like not factual at all. They know, you see, this is the problem. They know reality. They don't need it endorsed by anything external. But of course, by the same token, Muslims would base their ideas on faith and Hindus and any sort of poly, po polytheist and, and so on. Every, if, if it's only down to your own thoughts, then anything can do. Why don't mm. we believe in the truth theory? I mean, it's the same lack of, of a rational approach that is the real problem. And it's very difficult to get people who don't think terribly rationally to start thinking rationally. Faith you, in that term, because without faith, I don't think there would be any of the religions. There wouldn't. And, and why, <laughs> why is there faith? Well, I suppose we can give it uh, the credit it with some virtues, some virtues, because after all, it gives people hope. Well, okay. Do you want to take hope away from them? No, oh, okay. So you, you know, that with faith they have hope. Maybe it helps them survive day by day. But that's not a convincing argument for anybody who likes the truth. You know, and sometimes the truth can be very harsh. You know, we are all going to die. End of story. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can hope for all kinds of things, but it doesn't make reality correspond to our hopes. So what did you find in your journey, because I think that that's an apt word to describe, um, in trying to find this character? Well, I started off not with faith in anything, but, you know, with, with a sense, a, 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 an historian's uh, rationality and, and a, a, a desire to know the truth. Now, all ancient sources that we might rely upon have drawbacks, they might be biased. They might be full of false stories. We, oh, they all have to be judged in their context and and by the criteria of plausibility. And some historians are more reliable than others, but they are all, you know, come under the microscope. But you know, we we start we 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 progress by looking at the ideas. Now there is a central idea of, of, of Christianity, and that is the idea that. There was a man, a saviour, who was born, it seems, to a virgin. And when he grew up, he performed a few miracles and then got himself crucified. Now, that, without that idea, you wouldn't have Christianity or nothing like the one we have now. So you think, well, OK, let's just, let's just uh, drill down on that central idea. What substantiates that he was ever born? or that he was around in Jerusalem at that time, or that indeed the Romans took the trouble to crucify him. It's 
plausible. The idea is plausible, yes, you know, but, but that doesn't make it a reality. It's just a plausible option. And and the strange thing is, no matter where you look in the story, which bit of the story you investigate, it always falls short of real evidence. And you come back to this thing, oh, well, you've got to believe it. Well, we may as well be believe this story of the three bears then. You know, it's, 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 it's no difference. <laughs> well, there's some substantiation to them three bears. <laughs> well, I there think are I'm... bears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and how apt of a metaphor. It's perfect because, you know, I was like you, I, but I came out of faith. I came out of the Christian religion. And I remember, my wife will tell you as well, when the reality hit that the name Jesus was made up. I mean, they get back to Iusus, Iusus, and but the problem is when you start getting into Iusus, it's Zeus. It means I am Zeus. Pretty close, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, so who was the reliable historian? That's how I found Philo. Well, Philo was Philo of Alexandria. He was known to the Herod family, yeah. and he also knew the, the, the Flavians. I'm saying, mm -hmm. okay. So then we have Flavius Josephus, mm -hmm. who is the Jewish proclaimed historian, uh, mm -hmm. who was under and stayed in the villa uh, with Vespasian. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, who the hell was Vespasian? And what I'm finding through when I would started digging into the history, I can't find this guy. I can't find any evidence of any person that the Romans particularly took notice of. Yeah, yeah. Jose to you, you take Josephus, yeah? You mentioned Philo, but let's move on to Josephus. Now, not only wasn't he around when Jesus supposedly lived and died, because he wasn't born until, what, 37? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, and his writings come along maybe 40, 50 years later. So it's much after. Now, Forget Jesus for a moment. Josephus lived through that primary period, according to the Christians, when the church spread phenomenally through the Holy Land, spread out across the known world. Whole towns were converted, according to the Christians, when, when an apostle or one or two apostles moved through those places. And yet... Josephus, who was alive and there during that entire period, is not aware of any of that. The, the best witness we have to first century events in Judea, and he doesn't say any of that to confirm the, the spread of the church. Now, that to me is pretty powerful non-evidence of Jesus. Yeah, and I think that that is actually, you're, you're, you're making reference to the end of the uh, book of the Gospel of John, and it said, and it went throughout all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and beyond. You're right. I mean, the Phoenicians were, were traitors back then, right? Mm -hmm. they, they were very much very, part of the Roman Empire. It's amazing because when I started studying the Phoenicians, they didn't have any evidence of anything. No documents, no, no nothing. Of yeah. this, so, pe so people ask, "What evidence do you have for non-existence?" But the, the but the evidence of non-existence is this huge absence of any positive evidence. Although the the the, the people who make extraordinary claims, the proof of, of 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 evidence should be upon them. But the Christians don't accept that. But anyway, working on the premise they, that they give us, there is no evidence where there should be evidence. And okay. One author not writing about Jesus, okay, you will allow that. Every author, every author. Um, there was a book last year, I think it was, uh, came out, I forget the name off the top of my head, it may come to me, but it was something like 295 documented first century writers uh, and not one of them mentioned Jesus. Now, at that level of non-evidence you have to say come on this is this is just not so you know it's it's a fable it's a fable and now you know we can find plenty of evidence of how the fable was assembled you know that's a very 
you know, interesting and, you know, that, that story. You know, where? Do, why do they have him walking on water? What is the meaning of that? Why do they put that in? Why does he convert, you know, a, a, a water into wine? Why would Jesus do that? Is there a moral reason? Well, it's hard to think of a moral reason, especially when it's just some sort of wild party that he, uh, some <laughs> wedding he's gone to. You know, that... <laughs> that wedding had a, a, a lot of wine. Whoop, I'm, I'm telling you, if you if you're drinking 55 gallon vats, baby, I mean, whoa! Absolutely, that was one hula of, of a party, all right. But there is a rational reason. The Christian Christian priests were competing with the priests of Dionysus. Now, one of the tricks of Dionysus, the god of wine, was to was to convert water into wine and and, you know, and they had special vases constructed to do that particular trick you know so that little one that gets added onto the jesus saga and 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 so and you can map all of those stories uh, you know wh why does he do this why does he say that and it's a it's a mythology that's weaved weaved over a period of decades they weave all this story oh. together dionysus that is the more I studied the history, the actual history, I'm saying that this is plagiarism by the Christian. They literally did an identity theft. <laughs> what, what do you say? I mean, that's the closest I can think of in the modern vernacular. They stole. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say the, the, the priests of Dionysus and the priests of Jesus were the same sort of fraudsters, you know, and, <laughs> and they would copy tricks from each other. Now, that's the truth would be known. They were, you know, it's, it's a bit like, you know, Windows and, 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 and uh, the, the Apple, you know, it's sort of like borrowing bits from each other backwards <laughs> and forwards. I mean, that's really, they, because <laughs> the marketplace for religion was very competitive in all the, all the cities of the Roman Empire. There were loads of, 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 of competing faiths. And it was a money-making business, wasn't it? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, religion was very profitable. It was, and it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, suck us, but you know, anyway. <laughs> Listen, I was a sucker. I mean, folks, if I had the money that I had given because of this this. See, I, I came up in the religion that God, because of Jesus, I could use Jesus' name, God was my banker. You know, I'd give him 10, and he'd give me back a hundredfold. Well, who the hell wouldn't buy into that? Mm, mm. <laughs> I mean, and then I discovered, well, wait a minute. <laughs> These scammers are just doing what they did 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Yeah, the problem with that is your 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 account is held in heaven, isn't it? You know, it is. One, one place you can collect on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm going to go with this check, and I'm going to go, well, who's going to cash it? <laughs> Here I am in the afterlife, Ken. Um, will you take it? <laughs> right, right. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So we, we don't have those sort of scam artists that you have in such abundance in America. You know, uh, I, I, I've, I've looked a little at the, the evolution of, of Christianity in America. And of course, it's, it's all part of the, the opening up of the West and the, 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 the free competition of each and everybody. And, and so you, you, there was never a state religion imposed from above. You know, you, you, so you had, it was a free enterprise, wasn't it? Christian free enterprise. And, and uh, no wonder you have a church on every corner. It's, it's really well, it's no different than going to Delphi, you know, the seer. Um, yeah. You're going to have to pay her, pay the tax. And the way that America is set up, as you well know, we mimic the Roman Empire to the T. I mean, by this whole... Um, how we make it uh, tax deductible to give to religion. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I <laughs> it's all part of what makes America a wonderful country. I don't well, know if you've ever had the chance to, to go to Corinth, you know, no, I have not. Have you? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, oh. In, and in Corinth, in the, in the ancient city of Corinth around what was the uh, Agora, the, uh, the center of town, there are all the different competing religions, right? You'll see 
temple of Apollo, you'll see a, a temple of Hercules, you'll see a temple of Dionysus, your temple to the imperial cult, you know, every, each and everywhere. There's a question mark over, was there any sort of uh, uh, synagogue? Because that's not obvious in, in what's left there. And what certainly wasn't there was any Christian church. That mm. just, you know, there's yeah. no evidence of that. You see, and there could have been, you know, uh, but no, no, no evidence of, of a Christian church in, 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 in Corinth or anywhere else. I mean, you know, um, the first churches we find are, are, are probably no earlier than the third century. So it's a Johnny come lately, really, despite its claims of, of, of you know. And, and Paul, I mean, first and second Corinthians is one of the tenets of the beliefs. I mean, it's where he spells it out. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> and, 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 well, and I've, I've seen the Christians in Corinth, actually, <laughs> and they, they sit underneath a tree and pray, of course, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience for them. I mean, now, the Corinth city, was a, a trading city, wasn't it? I mean, what was yeah, it? It's, it's basically a major port, a major port and uh, you know, link, linked to a, a smaller town on the coast, and it it enjoys a wonderful reputation for uh, for its immorality, and Christians love to to play with that particular tune. It, prob it probably wasn't any more immoral than any other maritime. Yeah, I was going to say, city. really, <laughs> sailors yeah. going into a port city, sin, sex. <laughs> <laughs> Although Paul was rather, you know, if, if whoever wrote this. Um, they were really into sex because I believe that the whole first book was about the fact that, what was it? There was a son who was having sex with his father's wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. That, like, that hasn't ever happened before. I mean, but that was the central core theme, you know, their immorality. Sure, sure. <laughs> the, 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 the Christians introduced to the world, a very austere morality. You know, it, it, they, they, they didn't mind sacrificing public health, but they, they wouldn't entertain what they regarded as immorality. And so one of the things that happened to Corinth is that the central area became turned into the bishop's palace and the communal toilets, which you can still see, the communal toilets were closed down because they couldn't have that. They'd rather people made use of the... the Defecate the right out. In the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so the yeah. idea of clean water and public baths and naked bathing, my gosh. Oh, no, I can't have that. And so mm -hmm. this very austere world came about. And, you know, they're very, very hostile to the theatre. So that form of entertainment got erased that was no longer allowed almost any serviceable building was converted into a church so you could get on your knees and and beg for you know salvation and and the blessing of the local people. that sounds like islam to me well it, it <laughs> I mean, there are parallels beyond belief. i was going to say well some say that if you really read the book the first and second corinthians it is the precursor to what eventually became Islamic law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't doubt that. And, and you know, people today, you know, they're, for good reasons, think in terms of, uh, of some of the cruelties from people like ISIS uh, in the name of but, Islam. But those sort of cruelties were f anticipated centuries earlier by the Christians. After all, they... They believed that any f immoral or non-Christian literature should be burned for a start. Mm -hmm. So they, they initiated the idea of burning uh, all the science and, and secular knowledge of the ancient world. And then, of course, the dark shadow fell upon any philosophers who didn't subscribe to the Christian doctrine they increasingly were persecuting until in the end they were eliminated as well. This is the Dark Ages. This is why we were cast 
back a thousand years, you know, before we, you know, before any sort of recovery could begin, you know, thanks to the Christians and their their stupid storytell. Let me ask you, when we look at this term, and, and this is what I always try to tell people, they, they get this idea that this religion was set in stone and, you know, this, like you said earlier, was spreading everywhere. But as I started studying, I was curious if you found this, there's a gap of about 140 plus years where, quite frankly, there's nothing being written or I couldn't find it. That, that, that's right. The, the the pageant is set in pre pre war Jerusalem. You know, it's a little town in that period. And then there's supposedly a apostolic age that takes us through into the second century. But in actual fact, nothing is 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 certain for a period like you say, a century and a half, which is often called the Dark Age in a sort of literal sense. So a Dark Age. It's a dark period. We know nothing. And then. And then Christianity seemingly exists, right? It seemingly <laughs> exists, but it's not a persecuted faith. You know, that's a, again part of the Christian mythology that they, they, because of the faith, they were persecuted. The Romans didn't even know them. You know, they, they were unknown to the Romans. There were a few thousand Christians in total across across the Eastern Mediterranean, but it was only when they got lucky during the time of Constantine that suddenly these Christians were the, the, the new kids on the block. And, and it was quite, quite tragic for the world that once they got the ear of the emperor, what anybody else said didn't really matter. And so they, you know, they slowly you know, wrapped themselves around the imperial court. And then of course they were highly privileged. And with that high level of privilege, they imposed their, their faith on a very reluctant pagan world. And, yeah. you know, aspects of that pagan world survived for centuries and in, 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 in it was a very bitter and, and, and savage s- struggle, a bit like, you know, you can imagine what ISIS would have done, given a free hand and almost tried, you know, everything they didn't approve of was eliminated. That was yeah. eliminated. At the sword. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing about kindly little Christians, you know, fe- feeling sorry for everybody. <laughs> they, they, no, they, no. They, they, you know, they, you mentioned earlier about Alexander, uh, Alexandria. Now, where Philo came from, Alexandria was was a, a leading city of the Roman Empire, but very mm. rapidly after the Christians took over it, it collapsed into being a little village. Now, why was that? Well, the point was. You know, the library was closed. The library was burnt. The libraries were cut, shut down. You know, the, the p- pagan philosophers fled. Some of them back to Greece. A lot of them went to Persia, you know, because in the battle between secular power and, and, and religious power, the bishops prevailed. And, and their authority was absolute. And, 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 you know, you weren't just a criminal. If you didn't agree, it was a sin against God. Yeah. And and they they weren't compassionate then. They didn't bring in their their their, their, their love one another or love your enemies. <laughs> then the, what prevailed was you shall not la- suffer a witch to live. You know, and yeah. these witches were eliminated. They were. And you know, when you mentioned the Library of Alexandria, it. I don't know. That again was one of the greatest tragedies to humankind. Um, the knowledge yeah yeah we're ignorant today can because of that yeah, yeah. well and it, i suspect it, that it was in fact in, in in history shows that they think it was in fact one of the christian sects yeah yeah some of the libraries partly there was a, a, a one library got destroyed when caesar took the city and the, it, you know it caught fire, but you know, but there's ample evidence that it it it, it, it was Bishop Cyril. Uh, yes, thank who, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who who instituted? What basically he, he called the monks, the mad monks, the black clad unwashed monks who were fighting the devil in the desert. You know, I think they were called the Parabololi. You know, they were called in from the desert you know, to, to wage Cyril's war for him against the infidel. And the infidel was, <laughs> was the, 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 the citizens of their own city, but that was enough, you know. And, and once you get, once 
religious hotheads get a free hand, I mean, really, it's very difficult to reverse that. You know, that, hence why we had such a trouble, even with modern technology, stopping ISIS. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you, you let a, a, the devil out of a bottle, in a sense. Yeah, and that's a mean genie too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, when I think about the history that humanity has had to endure, uh, I took the direct quote off of your website. Um, and by the way, folks, I left the links down there um, for Ken on that. But I love how you said the cost to humanity of 15 centuries of Christian savagery, of a hundreds of millions of lives brutalized. Turn, uh, truncated and sacrificed to war, torture, uh, program, burning, pestilence, and plague is an incalculable. Christianity is the worst disaster in human history. Yep. I, now, I contend, if you want to know about savagery, you go no further than the Bible, than Christianity. It's a brutal, ask, ask the, the, the Incas, Ask the Mayans, ask the tens of millions indigenous species of middle of Mesoamerica, what happened? Yeah, yeah. You're, I mean, you're, you don't hear you're that. Right. Mm, you're absolutely right. Yes, I mean, it, it's convenient today to forget all those sort of things and, uh, and, 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 and perceive Christianity as, you know, really being helping people and kindly. And, and the Christians I know are like that, you know, because they are unaware or don't want to face up to or not interested in uh, their own history. They just see Christianity helps them have a, a, a positive but kindly attitude to life. I had an apologist tell me, Ken, that, that I was wrong because he pointed out to me, he says, modern Christianity is less than 500 years old. And I said, well, what are you saying? He says, well, 1514, when the split took place, um, he said, you know, we contend that that was our beginning to pick up where the Catholics had dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that's a very manipulative way of treating history. Yes, yes there was a is. very important uh, fracture in the Christian world with the Reformation, of course. The schism, was. the Great Schism, I think is what it was yeah. called. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, I think he's referring to the, the, you know, the, with the Church of Rome, but of course the Church of Rome had split already with the Church in Constantinople, the East and West. Um, and that was really a power play. It was a power play. It was rivalry for control of the Balkans. It was, you know, rivalry to be top dog. But then, then of course, the, the organized uh, racketeering of the Catholic Church, which went on for centuries, and beggars belief what, what abuses occurred during that time. I mean, in contrast, we, we were able to look at the last 50 years of Catholic abuse, and it's caused scandals across the world mm. in terms of, of, of their abuse of children and, and, and others, you know. It, it, you know. But for centuries, they, they were the masters, and, and, and they had nothing to do with religion, but they were the top dogs and spoke in the name of Jesus. Um, but, you know, we, we, and so, yes, there is this split, but to argue that somehow... What it became nice at that point? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Well, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? You know, you guys. You know, as I tried to point out to him, I said, you know, look at what you did. I said, if you want to take your modern day, I said, the guy that wrote your Bible, then King James. I said, what did he start? Mm. I mean, mm. if I was alive back in the early 17th century, I'd be already at the stake, brother. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be you having go. people all good. <laughs> and you probably right next to me. <laughs> uh, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's brutal. It, it, you have to be very selective if you try and maintain that Protestants are nice and good guys and, and, and the Catholics are the, you know, the really evil ones. And, and, and you know, they're, they're the ones who, you know, basically were corrupt and everything. But it's got all pure. Since then. That is not true. If anything... The Catholics by that stage were, had a more relaxed uh, tyranny compared to the austere authoritarianism that came in with the Protestants, 
you know, Calvinism, for example, you know, yes, a yes. very austere, brutal version of Christianity. Mm. Nothing new about that. They seem to think that somehow they had recaptured holy requirements from the from the beginning. But but that whole thing doesn't wash at all, because what do they have that they aren't dependent upon the Catholic Church for providing for them? They had no independent route in, into what early Christians thought. You know, yes, they, 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 they mount that sort of argument, but it doesn't wash. It doesn't wash. Does it? Well, didn't Ireland just recently back in the 70s and 80s? I mean, wasn't there the civil war or the Protestants against the, the Catholics? Oh, well, you're, you're talking what, what, what we in Britain call the Troubles, right? The yes, troubles. yes, yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, that was essentially on sectarian lines. And even now, if you come into the, you know, we're, we're currently in the throes of a, a, a very interesting election, you know, th there's still those divides, divide in, in, in Northern Ireland, which is still part of the UK, that, that it, you know, it's that basically people over there vote on sectarian lines. That's, yeah. that's very true. Wow. True, and, 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 but, but isn't that true? Uh, uh, doesn't everybody know that? that religion, I don't know. <laughs> religion <laughs> everywhere is, is, <laughs> it stirs up trouble. You know, it demonizes some people to make other people yeah. feel better. <laughs> That's the price we all pay. I, and you know, and I, I, I'm thinking about it, you know, because YouTube, I mean, uh, YouTube, uh, Mono, I mean, that's how they got to be where they were at. I mean, uh, and he kind of just saying, you know, what, what, what's the, the, the craziness of this? And I, I don't know. That's the problem I have. You know, I don't have a problem with people believing whatever they want. But when it starts to becoming integrated into the government, into the civil laws, and then it begins to be, um, I call it everywhere in the culture. Yeah, it makes you feel like sometimes, Ken, you're living in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's true. And, and, and it, the, 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 there are progressive wings to, to, to religion, of course, who are, can endorse, you know, the ordination of women and uh, gay marriages and, and so on, you know, but for each and every one of those, there's others who are fundamentalists, you know, stick with God's word as they see it. And, and, and it's so socially conservative, you know, it makes any rational per person want to weep. But we, my wife and I, we've been ostracized by our former um, Christian friends, you know, because... Well, you you mean they don't love love you even well, though you're an enemy they don't love you still no 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 they think that i'm now uh, over on the other side you know <laughs> well wayne and lynn are going to hell and you know we, we we tried to help them but uh yeah there's nothing you can do about them just you know the bible says that you cut them off and you leave them to their own destruction and that was exactly quoted to us yeah yeah and i'm going well wait a minute I was in your circle. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, so it, it does, and it does. And I mean, I, I think about you, you saying that your your parents were not religious. Um, now, were they in the war in in yes. London? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. wow. And and that was a you know uh, my father, like most people who fought in the war, re rarely ever spoke about it. When I was a child growing up. He, the war was not something he wanted to speak about. And you can understand how that whole generation yeah. didn't want to relive what was, for all the heroics that show up in Hollywood movies, absolutely horrendous, absolutely horrendous, yeah. And uh, so- Did your parents ever talk about those times? No, not really, no, no. no. Mm. Um, uh, my, I know that my father used to be on the boats that uh, in the merchant navy that took freight to northern Russia. Uh, in, the, in the convoys, uh, I think mm -hmm. three, sh three, sh three of the ships that he was on got torpedoed. You know, I mean, but th there was a story there, but I never heard it. You know, uh, my mother obviously worked in did factory work as all women did then to keep yes. things moving. But no, that, that was a strong dose of reality. You know, not all this fancy stuff. I've got a Catholic friend at the moment. He, and, you know, he's a Catholic couple, right? They're both friends. His wife believes 
they experience in their church, not personally, but they see people, the Holy Spirit, you know, and people get animated or entranced. But he doesn't believe it. <laughs> he's, he's rational enough not to believe that someone throwing themselves around on the floor is actually being animated by the Holy Spirit. Right. And so there's a there's a bit of an issue there. Is, is the I think they would call that an exorcism, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 this is a a, a true fact, uh, Ken. I used to live in uh, uh, East Tennessee, and actually went to a church where they actually handle the stakes. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. I never went back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe a, a few of those guys have uh, not exactly survived. <laughs> More than a few. And, and you know, and it just got to the point where you said something early in our conversation. It's like you lose all common sense, reasoning. You know. Yeah, but, but I, I've had Christians tell me to do that in a very direct way. Stop being rational. Just feel the Lord. Feel the Lord, you know, let the Lord, you know, I've been given prayers to, to recite, you know, and with the assurance that, the, the, well, if you recite the correct words, whether you believe it or not, God will respond, right? Mm. Well, yeah. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. And of course, they can't say in which way he'll respond. <laughs> you know, they leave that open. They leave that open. So if I can convince myself, oh, Oh, I, you know, I just found five pounds on the pavement. That's God. It's a sign. It's a sign. You know, it's 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 it's, it's so transparent. But oh, <laughs> I just read this book called "The Case." It was an article, uh, "The Case Against Miracles," and the author, the the writer of the uh, the article, pointed out. He said, "You know, when you stop and think about miracles that are coming from this unseen God." It's like playing the lottery. Well, guess what? I got the winning ticket this today, so I get a miracle when the rest of the people do without. And his point was, if there is this God that's giving out these special little bonuses, well, that's segregating people. And as his point, they're worse off than when they were when they began, because somehow or another, they don't feel that they're worthy enough. Mm. Mm, yeah. And that's that's what we live in. Um, wow, this hour is going that fast. Um, we don't we don't celebrate the Christmas in the way that we used to. And you know, as I've seen it now, if you're saying per personally, you don't. Uh, no, celebrate. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, we don't put up a tree. Don't want... it, it's it's gotten so commercialized that um, I refuse to participate in that. But mm. the reason why I say that is that that's how eventually I found my religion that I left was that when I realized it was all about money. <laughs> Not about, the, I actually had the person who is the president's spiritual advisor say to me, it's about how much we take in because that's how we're going to be able to do our job. And I went, so... Mm -hmm. This is why your book is so important. Um, I wish people uh, would take the time. I know they are going to buy it and read it and learn from it. It's 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 quite a read. How long did it take you to write it? How long did I, oh, I think uh, it was the best part of five, six years. Best part. Um, I, I, I started to write articles and put them on the web people said is it available as a book i thought okay i could map it out as a book eventually i got round to publishing what the, what the website was then it's about three times the size now um but the book is, is well, five, 500 uh, uh 560 pages or something uh yeah it, 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 it's it's a good read and it, it but it's a it's a, you've got to be receptive to the idea of simply a factual, secular interpretation of all that is in the Bible. 
if you start off as you know with a faith-based agenda you are going to find it all unconvincing you know this is what christians respond to me all the time as soon as they see the title of some articles they refuse to read it you know it's, to them it's yes too much, yes too much of an assault on their established way of viewing the uh, viewing life and and, and, that, and but so we we won't we won't get to everybody. We'll just no. get to the the brighter, enlightened one who who've got an open mind. You know, that's the thing. Well, but you said I, it is bad. It, it, it's it's eliminating a fraud in history. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't say, I, you know, and of course, I don't point out that of true. That's true of Christianity in isolation. I'd say all religions are fraudulent. Yeah, I would agree They're with all you. Fraudulent. They're just fraudulent <laughs> in different but similar ways. And some of them are a bit more tolerant than others. Others are very exclusive and says and say that all the rest have got to be eliminated. And others say no, we can we can compete and live alongside uh, you know th 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 these other religions. So some of all religions are false, but some are more dangerous than others. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And people ask me, they say, well, do you not believe in God? I said, listen, God is a man-made construct. I believe that there is a source of thing, everything, but I do not believe in a human personification of a deity. I just, I, and I've contended that no God has manifested before humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there's the simple propositions. So I'm sure atheists and free thinkers have made many times to the religious why doesn't god just write his message in the sky so we can all see it or why doesn't he just put the thought in directly into our head he, he reads our thoughts all the time why can't he do that you know why has he got this strange little riddle that if you if you accept jesus as your savior and, and obey your local church ah you're you've made it you've got through the maze you know that that gets you out but anything else doesn't work by the way, I love your website. I mean, if a person is serious about doing research, uh, folks, this is this is a library in itself, Ken. Yeah, it's a, a major work of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, give yourself credit. It's it, it's yeah. a it's a spectacular. Um, it, it's a treasure trove of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it, of course. I'm very proud of it. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, there's, there's an issue now, of course. The internet has moved on. It's moved on to handheld devices. It's moved on to mobile phones. And, and so I, I, I believe desktop computers are sort of not selling as much as, you know, anywhere near like mobile phones. So... And it's a horrendous task I face trying to make it compatible for a phone, for goodness sake. And people don't understand. It's hard, folks. You got to write to a completely different platform, different coding. And that's your background, right? You were in the software industry. Oh, yes, I was. I was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, I, I, but I, you know, I... I'm not current in all the latest technologies. That's a different thing. And, you know, it's six moving months really in the computer business and your old hat, you know. <laughs> you know, um, I was one of the early pioneers of the B2B e-commerce thing. And we used to have the term uh, back in the mid 90s, you know, we worked on internet time. Yeah, well, the thing about it, when you work on internet time, you become history in internet history. Boom, yeah. baby. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, well, anybody who's worked in that area just knows what, what you know you do, you've got to run to keep still you know it's it's it's, it's a hard task so yeah i mean so if my, my website is is old fashioned in that sense yes it's a tremendous library but it, it's you've got to have the discipline like you when you read a book yes some people won't read books end of story no uh, that's why I've shifted in, in in recent years over to youtube and i present these youtube and of course, it's much more acceptable, right? Yes, it is. Yes, you it know, is. It, it, it's easier to watch something than, than to read. Um, it, it, a picture tells a thousand words and, and all the rest of it. And they're short. They're short. This, it's not hours and hours. So you can drop in and watch a 10 minute video and, and, and be enlightened on something or other. So, yeah, there are challenges. But uh, 
I need to put your YouTube channel in the description as well. My apologies on that. I will get that posted though. So, uh, because again, it's, it, I think you're doing a valuable service. I, that if people really want to get out from the God spell, your, your material is an excellent way to get that, that mind quite is broken. That's yeah, how I'll yeah. put it. Yeah. yeah that, and, and that's right. And that's why I started. That's why I, I, I quite boldly styled it Jesus never existed. Right? <laughs> you know, it, it, I didn't style it after my own name, Ken Humphreys. You know, I oh, said, Jesus never existed. That's the important thing. And okay, it shocks many people. It doesn't shock them as much now as it did 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> No, nowhere near the shock level anymore. It's like a, a, a respectable but minority position. You know, many people will begin saying, Jesus, if he even existed, you know, blah, blah, blah. That is where we've made progress. And we have made progress. We There's have. No two days about it. You know, many more people. The battle is really in the States, because I say in, in Britain and Europe, this is largely a post-Christian you know, continent, you know, we've moved on. Uh, it, it, but America's holding out with some of these <laughs> quaint ideas. <laughs> Ken, you have really given me a, an insight that I had not looked at on a global scale. The fact that, you know, we are living in that area of what I would call the post-Christian era. I think it's rapidly coming to an end. Uh, although I think the United States is definitely lagging behind, but that's an interesting term. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it is. And unfortunately, for, in America, of course, because it's tied up so much with money, and man, money opens doors, money buys influence, money buys advertising, and, and, and so on, you know, there will be a, a, a lot, you know, if you talk about big tobacco or big <laughs> petroleum or big religion, it's going to resist to its dying breath. Do you know how much money they take in here? I just got the two years ago because the reports lag by about two years. But get this. Um, the last numbers in the United States, churches took in, are you ready for this? $157 billion. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the GDP <laughs> of about 80% of the countries of the world. That's big money. And, and, you know, and that's what I see. This is why your book is so important. History shows that this is about money. It's about, well, the Catholic Church is the largest single real estate holder, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that still the case? Well, I don't know. They're very secretive about their holding. They always have been. Yeah. <laughs> possible, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, and, and many of their assets. So how do you, how do you how do you when you when you might own half of Rome? How do you value what that really represents in today's values? Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's 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 obviously a colossal take, both in in assets and in income, for sure. And 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 they're invested. I mean, the the, you know, the Church of England is invest, even though it's small small potatoes compared to other things. But it but it uh, you know invests in all kinds of companies they sometimes oh. reluctantly have to admit you know they've got holdings in the same way they they had to admit they held, held uh, uh they were in the slave trade i mean you know the church of england was no problem being partners in the slave trade till it become unfashionable and then of course they discovered they're just christian charity and everything's changed a little bit but uh you know, as you probably know when they abolished slavery in england oh. or for, you know, yeah. most of the trade it was the slave owners who were compensated, not the <laughs> slaves. No, as it always is. Ken, before we, I know we're, my hour's almost up on here, but I'm curious. So this will be a question that I'm sure will be asked. So as, as in a post-Christian culture or society, what are you finding people to fill the gap? Is, is it, is there a different type of a spiritual awareness going on or is it, totally secular uh, in, in its nature. That, that's, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's not totally secular, although it is largely secular. And if you look at the, the, the census statistics, faith is strongest, although well, it's a minority among the older groups. And as you mm. move down the age cohorts, 
so le there's less religious faith. It's down to you know sort of single figures among teenagers. You know, so it doesn't look at all good for the long term prospects of, of, of religion. That so what are what are young people doing? Well, I I, I guess they go clubbing and they go <laughs> chase around the, in the way that they've always done. And 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 yes. Do people go to church? Well, yes, they do. But uh, the, the, I, I recently, uh, there was an article that I put on my, my, my Facebook page saying, you know, according to a particular newspaper report, the average church attendance in the UK was down to 27 people. 27 people was the typical Sunday congregation. Now, Compare that to your mega churches in Houston or wherever, where you've yeah. still got thousands. You know, it is almost dead on its feet. It's almost dead on its feet. Twenty-seven old ladies, basically, and an elderly yeah. priest. Yeah, and then and then that church gets converted into I don't know. It might get converted into into a public house, it, or or will be what you would call a bar. You know, it, it, you know the, the it's it's. So, the social phenomenon of religion in Britain is disappearing. There are, I won't say it's all that way, because there are happy, clappy groups now. We, sure, yeah. we, we, get, we get some of your, your infusion <laughs> from America, and so we get happy clappies. And, and of course, they're, they're, not, they're not really interested in history or even in the, 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 the theology. It's, it, it's all feel-good factor. You know, yeah, feel -good yeah. Factor. Yeah. And, and that, of course it works, it works. So there's some people do that. The other thing that complicates the situation with, with migration into the UK, people bring their traditional faith. Mm, and if yeah. people are coming to Britain from Poland, you know, or they bring Catholicism. And if they're coming from, from Asia, they, 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 they bring Islam and Hinduism. You know, so we, we, we are getting, um, there's a mixed picture. <laughs> a mixed yeah, picture. yeah. Wow, that is a real convergence when you really think of it. That is amazing. Oh, I'm going to have to. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to watch more of this, folks. <laughs> Fascinating, Ken. Well, I I have just. I got to tell you, this has just been a true pleasure and a joy just to have you on here. I, um, you're of the same kindred of uh, the same bolt of cloth. Well, I've enjoyed it immensely, but then I, I do enjoy, I, I love Jesus. I talk about him all the time. <laughs> People ask me, you know, what, what what's one of the biggest regrets you have? And I said, well, I don't have any regrets, but I will say this. It would have been really nice to have had a dude like that. I mean, to me, he'd be the type of guy, and this is just in my culture, where, you know, you'd stop and smoke a joint and you would have philosophical discussions about spirituality and, you know, consciousness and, and, and how does that play into it? I don't see it as this religious, holy person. So that. No, no. It, it, yeah. If, if we follow the, 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 the fairy tale along a certain route, yeah, you can see him as a nice guy you'd sit and smoke a joint with. But mm -hmm. then you'd say, hey, are you going to? actually get your, your butt up off the floor and, and, and help work, you know. <laughs> we can't well, be hippies all day long. <laughs> but you know what? The thing about it is he never did work. I mean, you know, it's... it's... <laughs> no, the original scam. <laughs> Just say, you know, <laughs> so anyway, I kind of just goes out the whole thing about where I think Paul wrote, well, if you don't work, then you're not worthy enough to eat. I went, mm, whoa. Mm, yeah. Yeah, well, that's a slave true. mentality. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a more austere figure behind Paul for sure. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's nice, <laughs> nice Mr. Jesus at all. No. I feel like Hansel and Gretel, you know, we're the mm. dinner. <laughs> mm, yeah, well, Ken, yeah. thank you so much, sir. What an absolute joy. Um, listen, I'll let you take us out. Tell people where they can find you and, um, you know, let them know a little bit about uh, how they can follow up. Okay, okay. Well, my website, very, very easy to remember, www.jesusneverexisted.com. That's where you'll find my writings. But for people who'd like to just watch a, a picture rather than read, there's the YouTube channel, which is obviously on YouTube, and it's Jesus Never Existed, but because of the, the, the number, the, the Jesus Never Existed is spelt without the final E in ED, so it's Jesus Never Existed. 
you know okay but you'll find it you'll find it because thousands of people do <laughs> <laughs> i'll link it to us everyone folks when i repost this it's great and you I have a facebook page minute. you have a facebook page as well right oh yeah i'm on facebook i'm on facebook uh yeah so you can get me on facebook uh where else is that? Yeah. And of course you can get the book. If you order the book from the website, that's, it will happen. It will happen. A miracle will happen. A book will come in the post. <laughs> Mary, uh, Mother Nature in the chat room is one of the moderators. Thank you, moderators, has put all the contact information. Mother Nature, would you send that to me as well? I mean, on the YouTube channel, I'll just cross yours and her. Um, so anyway, we're going to get you taken care of, Ken. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, sir. Um, hold on with us as I as we end out. I just want to uh, follow up real quick. Folks, thank you again. I'll see you tomorrow as well. And enjoy the day. Thank you for coming in. This has been an exciting hour. All right, folks, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.